Hey guys, welcome back to Beards of War. This is Fat Broken Rambo coming from you live from my basement. You know, it's cool like that. Uh, today's movie we're going to talk about is Beekeeper, starring Jason Statham, Mini Driver, Jeremy Irons, uh, Josh Hutchison, famous from Five Nights at Freddy's recently, and Felicia Rasha Rashad, my, my apologies, uh, known as Mrs. Huxtable. Um, she's America's mom. So, Movie came out in 2024. It was actually released in theaters in January time frame. It was actually a pretty decent success. Uh, it ranked in a total of 152 million and some other approximate dollars. Uh, that's from Box Office Mojo as of today. Um, it is directed by David Ayer, who is um, a, a favorite of mine. Uh, he, he made one of probably the quintessential war movie, uh, in my opinion, and that's Fury, about a tank crew. Uh, he also did um, End of Watch with Michael Penna and Jake Gyllenhaal. And then he did Suicide Squad, and the rumor is he's got his own cut of that that film. Maybe one day Warner Brothers will wake up and actually open it up for the public, just like the Snyder Cut, but we'll see. But anyways, we're talking about The Beekeeper, and this is all about watching Jason Statham kick the living shit out of people. But before we do that, a quick word from today's sponsor. Hey, guys. So Roan Industries is a veteran-owned company that strives to provide better gear for better operators. To do this, they design products with only the necessary moving parts, no excess fluff, and simple functionality. When you get to the checkout section, be sure to put in BOW in all caps to receive a 15% discount from our brothers over at Roan. Hey guys, so just to do a quick recap of what this movie's all about, but before we do that, we're gonna launch into a spoiler alert. So um, everything we talk about is up for game. So um, buyer beware if you're watching it at this point, five, four, three, two, one, spoiler territory. Okay, so movie kicks off with uh, Jason Statham, and he's kind of helping out some folks in his community, uh, Felicia Rashad's character. Um, he's, she's got a bee problem, so he's a beekeeper, <clears throat> goes out and handles a bee problem. And they have some, um, they have a, a friendship going on or, or like a, a mutual respect for one another and um, good people doing good things for, for fellow good people. And it's awesome, man. Like, you care about the character right off the bat, um, seem like a genuine relationship, and then things kind of take a turn and they go a little south, right? You don't know what Jason Statham is all up to except for bees. Um, but uh, Felicia Rashad's character gets um, scammed by uh, a, a group of folks that are targeting uh, senior citizens and uh, manipulating them into basically handing over their, their, their life's work. Um, it's an unfortunate turn of events. Uh, her character commits suicide, um, and then Jason Statham comes on the scene and re realizes, uh, starts piece putting it together as far as what happened, um, and you're introduced to some supporting characters along the way as well. Um, what transpires is Statham's character through his government, his former life's connections as a, uh, as a governmental beekeeper. Um, not sure if that's the official title, but it sounds like it. Um, he used to be part of the specialized program and he uses those resources to, f to, to kind of like lead the, uh, the trail of crumbs back to the big bad. Um, and he comes across the, the first call center where, um, those folks had just swindled, um, uh, Felicia Rashad's character out of, um, you know, her, her money. And Jason Statham is just not a happy camper, and he's. We're at the stage in life, kids. If you if you're ever looking for a life lesson, this is all about fucking around and finding out. There you go. And he did that because he fucked with America's mom. That's right. Uh, that right there hit home for me. I was like, Jason, whatever you're you're doing, I'm down. Like, this is Claire Huxtable that literally got scammed, and it's something that is one of those uh, crimes that you can relate to. You know, as being a regular person, you know, like it's not like oh, an abduction, you know, some high profile, you know, thing. It's like, yeah, man, they scammed this woman out of her money. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, the only way she could deal with it was the suicide. So, um, you know, obviously they had a relationship which caused him to activate. And when he activated, he literally just rolls right up to the front door to gas canisters. He doesn't do it sneakily. <laughs> He's not sneaking. He's full on Ford pickup truck front door. Bust the first two security guards' asses, goes inside with the canisters. Yeah, I'm going to burn this place down. He literally told them. And then you have Garnett, which is the you know the first little weasel that we run into. And anytime you have to ask your security to please do something to someone, it's not going to go well. Like, no, nope, this isn't going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work out. <laughs> and Jason Statham went Jason Statham. Uh, so it was just exactly what you expect from Jason Statham in that moment, which is what I love. Just gratuitous violence i'm busting people upside the head with staplers computer screens keyboards whatever you're getting kicked punched whatever his hat you know represent him today 
never came up his head throughout the entire movie, which is fantastic. Um, and that's just kind of just just the beginning, you know. So he was literally on a mission from that point on. The the thing I loved about it the most was, um, well, you love a good villain, right? Like everyone loves to see a good villain get the kermuppins. And I will say this about this movie: uh, the villain in this is phenomenal because, man, the instantaneous second they take advantage of that that character, you want to burn them down, like. They're they're this they are some of the lowest scum in the in the world and these people really exist in real life and the, the writers of this film did a phenomenal job of actually capturing that and making the audience like feel that rage. Right, and I on. think everyone like I said everyone can relate to that you know like yeah. grandma mom you know getting yeah. getting scammed out of her life you know her her life's like worth you know and she yeah. was in charge of like a charity that you know took care of kids it was like the worst of the worst man and they're just having fun high fiving like yeah. yeah man we got another one like it's a sale you know like she's a school teacher. Pe- I mean, right, they just ruined oh this woman's life, you know, and she committed suicide. But uh, that was hard to watch, yeah. even though they didn't show the suicide. You, you know, you saw the aftermath of the suicide, but it was still, it was tough to swallow. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty rough, man. I, I mean, you know, Jason Statham and or you, you know, how you said he he went off on the guys. I, it's a dad joke, but he went state ham. <laughs> ah, yeah, that Aww. was a pretty good one. Not really, I but uh, I mean, between Jason Statham and Claire Huxville, like. It had to be a good movie, right? I, I mean, had to be. It, it, that was a shame uh, what they did to her, and yeah, yeah to take to what two plus million from a charity, yeah. and then all of her savings and everything. Yeah, it was insane, and you you could see that he basically. I mean, he came out of retirement, and made phone calls uh, to just start to go to work, man. Which was, uh, it, it was pretty good, man. He he definitely put put some work to those boys, for sure. But uh, <clears throat> so speaking of, so that uh, what was the guy's name again? The the young guy who was Garnett. in Garnett. Garnett. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> what a putz. But anyway, he decided because he's mafia connected. Actually, not he decided. His next echelon up boss told him, "Hey, you're you know connected to the mob. Get some guys out there. Go find them and go stomp them out." So, uh, which is what he said earlier in the movie, but. So, yeah, you know, he goes out there to the guys, uh, well, actually to Claire Huxtable's residence because they were essentially going to find the most recent people that they scanned to see if they could figure out, you know, who might be after him. And uh, they saw him working on, you know, working with his bees, saw the truck, followed them. Obviously, he saw them, and uh, they they followed them back to the bees nest, so to speak. And they got inside of there. He had all that machinery going, you know, bandsaw, all, all kinds of stuff, just everything running for noise. But uh, about four or five dudes he had with him. I mean, from choking a guy out with a chain to I think he drove a, a shotgun uh, barrel the through chest. the guy's <laughs> neck. Yeah, after he disassembled it, too. Yeah, right. insane. And then, of course, it gets to the part where it's down to the one last guy by himself, and he's got the gun, and he's trying to weasel his way out of it. And Jason Satham just takes his hands or his hand right across that bandsaw, and, man, all four of those fingers were mm-hmm. gone, dude like nothing and threw him in <laughs> it looked like a little wagon he threw him in a wagon <laughs> and uh and walked off but you could tell there was the intention uh you know to do something else whether it was follow him or whatever which is what he ended up doing right and um then it moved on to the next piece of the movie which was great eric's got that one now yeah yeah so uh but first of all like he, he showed up with like his high school classmates like these guys didn't look like they were <laughs> built for that life you know it's like hey guys what are you guys doing tonight <laughs> You, know, you only go kill like a super operative. Like, sure, man, I'm down. I'm like, I got nothing going on, and it uh, results in you know fingers being removed, bodies being killed, whatever. But yeah, it goes into this next scene where um, Jason Statham has this guy on a bridge and literally like, like ratchets him down to the to the uh, to the car and just drives the Ford pickup into the bay and snatches the guy off the bridge into the water. <laughs> I'm like, it had to be a cheaper way to do. That. Like, do you want to give up your pickup for this, you know, piece of piece of garbage? But you know, it's it's got to be over the top. It's got to be that to be Jason Statham kills, and uh, it was just the guy was was spineless. You know, he had no swag. I don't even know how this guy got to be in charge of anything. But um, yeah, Jason Statham got to that point pretty quick. He get he gets the answers he needs, and then he's gonna end you. It's not like, oh yeah, okay, I'll, you know, I'll let you go. No, it's gonna be pretty. Uh, pretty gruesome when I do to you. So you get drowned by a Ford pickup. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, he traded up on that, right? Because he had that old Ford pickup, and he got, what, like, a Range Rover? He's driving that guy's yeah, <laughs> Range Rover. Right? He did upgrade each time. Yeah. But, yeah, it's well, really interesting. And the guy just stood there. Like, did you guys notice He that waited for it. Sorry. No, go ahead. Did you Did you notice that uh, what, the first thing that the henchman did before they show up in the barn is actually shoot his bees? Oh, yeah. He was right. like, hey, he brings yeah. my brought stuff. to my attention that it was a very similar action in John Wick. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's a really good point. Mm. Yeah, okay, which yeah, kind of matches right. up with the fight scene. Hey, I, I got an Easter egg for you. It was earlier on in the movie. I know we kind of passed that point. But in the intro of the movie, did you guys notice one of his beehives? I, I'm pretty sure I caught it. It was real quick glimpse. One of the beehives was American flag. I'm, I'm going to have to go back and look at it, but they kind of went. Hey, chat, went you got anything on that? It went Put in the comments, pretty, man. Pretty Let quick. us know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, guys, you guys go back. I'm going to double check it after this, but I think it was an Easter egg huh. when they were doing the intros and putting the names and everything up. Yeah. And, you know, the bees flying around. It was an open one that was flat. I'm pretty sure that it was, I mean, it was all the same color of the regular beehives. Yeah. But it had the darker section where the stars huh. were. And I was like, makes sense. Sneaky, sneaky. Right. That was pretty good. I'll take it. All right, so at this point, we're transitioning from uh, away. Uh, Jason Statham's character runs off with the Range Rover. He stops at a gas station. And while he's at a gas station, there's a call between Jeremy Irons, who's playing the former director of the CIA, now working for this private company that Josh Hutcherson uh, kind of answers to. It's, it's a weird dynamic, and it progresses through the movie. But he's having this call with Minnie Driver, who's the actual current uh, director of the CIA, and she makes him aware that it's a beekeeper problem, and then they're dispatching an active beekeeper to deal with Statham. And then the interaction occurs at this gas station, which is in the middle of nowhere. Hey, man, gas stations happen like that. But what I find hilarious is when the other beekeeper shows up, the active duty one, um, you know, she's looking like she just came out of, like, a rave. Uh, it's the only way I can describe <laughs> it, man. Like, I was half expecting her to, like, start twirling chem lights and shit. But, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know what it is with the films in this movie, aside from, like, Jeremy Irons. He's, like, pure class. Everyone is dressed so Dude, insanely eccentric. Tell me you don't feel just... like that now as a veteran. Like, walking around now, I'm like, what what happened? What when did, where, where are we? Like, what is this? And you're just seeing this weirdness all over. It's, like, all around. I feel like the old guy now. Well, I mean, I am the old I'm guy. cool with it. I just don't understand how you blend in as a clandestine operator. Like, <laughs> right. Like this, she's right? Definitely not very. Um, nice anyways, <laughs> she go. They go to work on each other with different various weapons. Then all of a sudden, she just gets like filled with this rage and decides that, hey man, fuck it, it's minigun time, and just pops out this <laughs> minigun. And I'm talking danger clothes to gas pumps. Right. Like there's no trigger discipline. Like she is the quintessential anti-professional of this of this relationship <laughs> right here. And it's it's just hilarious because I didn't realize that honey was flammable. But I guess it is, <laughs> according to this movie, because that's what Statham uses as a weapon. All these gas pumps going all over the place. He's like, oh, fuck it. I'm just going to throw honey at her. And well, then yeah, you on... hit her in the head, yeah, with the well, jar that, of honey. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> but well, even, you... even even this, like, as far as we're going off the rails, the scene is still fun, man, because you get to watch Jason Statham, like, once again, do Jason Statham shit. And it's always a pleasure. Like, you, you got to suspend reality. I know some of our comments were like, hey, man, it's just a movie. You're right. It is just a movie. This is just our opinion. Um, and you, you're entitled to your opinion, and we respect that here. Um, and this is just a movie, too. This movie just happens to be a shit ton more fun. Right, exactly. And then he oh, they yeah. basically just asked the guy, hey, uh, I need your car. <laughs> right? It's like, no explanation. I need your car. After what he just witnessed, sure, man. I don't, I don't care. Take it. You know, it's like, I'm not even asking any questions. I just saw this guy kill a woman that had, you know, like, Powerpuff Girls powers and just with a minigun on top of a truck. I'm not asking this guy anything. You know, nope. what I'm saying here, take the car. I don't need. I don't even need to know where to get it back. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'm good. Take I'll call the insurance. Right, exactly. And then it blows up like after everything, after yeah, so all that, that and it finally blows up. Yeah, I got. It. I got three things on that. So one, yeah, she reminded me of a character out of Cyberpunk 2077 for mm. sure. Um, two, that fight should have been over really early because she probably weighed like a buck twenty, maybe with clothes. Um, and, and a gun and to get smashed around like she did she got front kicked across, like probably five feet into a truck and then she I mean there wasn't even recovery time it was less than a second and then she's grabbing a gun and she's shooting at him not to mention she had been choked out by like a gas pump smash head first into a gun 
Yeah, she took some pretty heavies. I, I, you know, get it. She's been reality, <laughs> but again, you know, it's Jason Statham, and he's been whipping up on guys pretty, you know, pretty brutally throughout this, uh, this movie. And then the third, um, actually, I got a fourth. So the third is, yeah, he asked the guy for the keys, and the guy sat there, and the thing blew up. The, I didn't see the guy run. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so the saying. guy's done. Right. Pretty sure he's done. So he doesn't. Oh care yeah. That. And yeah. then I will give them. Here, here's the the cherry on the top for me, which I will give them a, a you know A plus for like. Hey, that was a nice little technical. First technical I've ever seen with, you know, like and you know a high end mini, on the back. She had she had a nice, you know, mini that apparently she just had a tarp thrown over driving down the road with and never blew off. But uh, yeah, I was nice mini, so I'll give it to him for that. But poor guy, man, lost his key and or his car and got blown up. That kind of blows. Yeah, no yeah. pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> Next one's over to you, Chris. Oh, is it over to me? Yeah. What? what how, how so is it over to me? Man, we've FBI. been going through this. We're so happy with this one. I am. I don't know. This one. This was a great movie, man. But, oh, now for some uh, some punishing blows. Although I like the, you know, whoever did the choreography work on this. Maybe you should have shouted out that dude, man. I, I think it was a, it, maybe the same guys that did John Wick stuff and the Nobody thing. Um, they did or maybe it's just Jason Statham. Uh, like he does great work with the choreography that he gets. But dude, he walks up inside of the already cordoned off area and into the middle of guys planning like where they're going to put like this SRT, this you know this uh, FBI SWAT equivalent, um, planning where they're going to put guys. And he walks into the middle and they're like, "Yeah, there's no back door because I would have used it," and commenced the whipping like 15 dudes. But another Easter egg in the background during that fight, you could see the bureau agents with their blue jackets on with FBI on the back facing outboard, you know, 20 feet away, which is where he had to walk from. And as guns are going off, he's beating them. You can still see those same guys facing outboard, not moving. It's not until he, I think he takes one of them hostage to start to go into the building. Then they all start to come towards him. So they didn't, he, they lit him in. He started a fight, probably beat up five or six of them. Those guys are still standing there, not even looking, and they're 15, 20 feet away. Shoots a guy, they're still not looking, and then once he takes them hostage, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we got we got to deal with this. Like, dude, he just he just crushed your guys, man. It was insane. Dude, if he just crushed my SWAT, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Like, I'm I'm sitting there acting like I didn't see it either. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, my, me and my windbreaker ain't going anywhere yet, dude. <laughs> right? Well, how'd you let him in? Speaking of that, speaking of that, the fact that – uh, Felicia Rashad's daughter was in charge of this whole thing. Makes no sense. Uh, like, that would have no taken, sense. yeah, they, they would have taken you off that case the minute it was your, you know, your mom was the victim. Now you wouldn't be so close to this, which is why you compromise the the whole mission when you're that deeply involved because you know you're supposed to stop them, but at the same time you don't want to stop them, so you're already conflicted. Why I call it conflict of interest, um, but yeah, he's like going through all the uh, FBI SRT, and I, I never understood this. And you see it just about in every movie. When you have a rifle or any firearm, the key to it is distance, right? There's no bayonet on the end of your rifle. Why are you running at the guy that's kicking everyone's ass <laughs> with the front barrel of your rifle? Like, what, are you trying to poke him? No, dude, kill him, pull the trigger. Back up and pull the trigger. You know what I mean? But movie magic, right? Jason stays them again. I mean, it's busting guys up that have full Kevlar on, helmets, everything his hat does not move like his he it didn't even like nothing like he didn't get nothing it just just stayed i don't know if it was glued to his head or what but <laughs> the hat had a it had a presence man it's almost like indiana jones's you know fedora that thing is just had a life of its own it, it it kind of spoke to the character like yeah i'm just a regular guy but i do irregular things and that fight right there going through like the top echelon of you know like agency like it was nothing I will tell you, for me, man, this was like a quintessential 80s action movie sequence because, like, is this suspending reality? Oh, 100%, dude. 100%. All of, all your points are absolutely valid, the two of you. I couldn't agree more. But there's a dude that wrote this script, or a dudette, uh, that wrote this script and was like, that's a great line of dialogue. I'm going to build a scene around that, and we're going to make it work because that line is just too good. And I think it is him talking to an FBI agent. be like, I would have used the back door. And you're like, dude, we can make we can make some magic there. It'll be a great scene. Let's just film it because who cares? And yeah, that was awesome. I didn't care 
Because, yeah, I think because we, we talked about it earlier, like how many times did he shoot federal agents versus how many times he shot like bad guys. And we were trying to do like the math in our head as far as like flowing through the sequence and be like, yeah, I think he shot me there in the leg, like non vital areas, or the guy took two rounds in the body armor. Um, and I still think that's legit. Um, but yeah, I didn't care. Cause yeah, it's, right, it's exactly. Because if you start, finish, uh, bad guys. Right, if you start breaking it down, it's like, wait, he said he was only after the bad guy, but he's like killing every agency guy that he runs into. But right. you can pick out scenes where, oh, I don't think he killed these guys, you know? So. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like Terminator 2, like, I will not kill anybody. Right. And you just take out kneecaps, right? <laughs> so, but still, still brutal. Um, and that brings us to the coup de grace, the, the final fight scene. Uh, so now you have, you know, Jason said they're at the, there's a big reveal here where the, the, the major antagonist mother is the president of the United States. Boom. And so that's the huge, like, what the fuck? So now they got this huge... You know, security detail, you know, because they're at a at a beach house where the president is, so you can't get any top security than that. But he got through that relatively easy with this whole, oh, yeah, I'm going to put one guy underneath the truck to check for explosives. And he literally just, like, mugs the guy under the truck, picks him up, you know, stuffs him in the truck, jumps out, just walking along with the rest of the, the, rest of the uh, security detail. And it's like, at this point, they've gotten so desperate for bodies that they drafted it. It was almost like, uh, like from the same people they got from um, the the other movie that we thought Polar, like the same, yeah. like type of guys, like colorful, you know, accents from what South Africa. The main guy was from South Africa because he had killed a beekeeper at some point. And he had one leg. Right, has one yeah. leg. I'm like, this is the best we could do. This is the best we got, and <laughs> and that was it. And they were all like working together, just trying to get this one guy who had basically just dismantled, broke down every type of security to get that close to the president of the United States. And the fight scenes were just glorious, man. It was just fun to watch, especially him fighting the South African dude. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, he got, that guy was, I mean, he was no slouch. I mean, he got shot in the face and, like, brushed it off, you know? Like, so he was, he was formidable. He was formidable. And uh, it was just watching Jason Statham once again be Jason Statham. So it's kind of like for us old guys, man, it's, it's great to watch. But I don't know, man. If I had to get in a fight like that, I'm, I may be fighting one or two guys, and I'm tapping out. Like, I'm good. I don't, I don't feel like I need to go through the rest of this. You know, let's go get some weapons because I can't hand fight all these guys. I'm, I'm tired. I'm too old for that. But not Jason. Jason still got it. And a lot of motion. <laughs> 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 yeah, dude. Uh, I will say, I mean, I love the fight scenes in here, like I said earlier. Um, but just like any movie, they always make the guy, when when he's about to end the good guy's life, they make him get way too close. You know, he already had the head nod uh, and the, you know, go head on it at least twice. And he didn't do it. He was like, ah, I got to, you know, for the movie's sake, I got to get closer um, to then do it. But yeah, the fight scenes were phenomenal. Um, you know, Jason just ripping through the house. They found a pretty good stunt double because when they told the guy to put his hands up and turn around, like before he turned around, I thought it was, I honestly thought it was Jason Statham. Like that was a pretty <laughs> good double, dude. Of and That guy's. He's definitely made his money on on that one. I will say throughout um, different points of the movie and uh, to the end, you know, at the at very end of this one, I noticed that uh, they kept true to the, the bee thing. You would see a bee fly by or hear it. So right when Jason, uh, when he went out the window, they had a bee, a bee fly by him. Then when he got down by the beach and, he, you know, he's, he's getting ready to go into the water, they had another bee fly by him. So I thought that was kind of cool. And then uh, you know you gotta you gotta love that they threw a Drager in there, right? He, you know, even though the guys are walking down the beach, they don't see him middle of the day or whatever. He's, you know, probably chest deep in the water, maybe stomach deep in the water. Puts his mask on, and uh, you know he takes off into the sunset, so to speak, in the ocean. Um, you know, rocking a Drager, so that that was pretty cool. But yeah, the, the fight scenes were phenomenal, and that hip shot that you know to the kid. Dude, I couldn't make that, you know, in an entire lifetime. I don't care how many times you ask me to practice that. Right, right next to the bottle one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I need a beekeeper. But dude, I need, I need to change professions. I need to get into beekeeping, dude. Obviously, right? the training's insane for these dudes, Jeez. man. And you get free hunting. I mean, right? yeah, that's a win. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'll, as long I'll as like you got no matches. I thought the end was pretty good. Um, my, my biggest heartache with the ending, like, I love the fight with the South African guy. It was great. I knew the leg was going to get kicked out at some point because it's just too... <laughs> Why would you bring attention to the fact you only have one leg if you're not going to use it against them? Fine, cool. That sounded great. 
Uh, I love the sequence when they stab the wall and then the knife goes through the glass and they're like kind of fighting the knife down. I thought that was kind of not a really cool cinematography. Uh, cinema. Looked good on film. There you go. I don't know what the, hell yes. the proper term is. Yeah, I, um, I will say the ending though kind of frustrated me because like it is the president of the United States, so she's gonna have like robust security and he just jumps out the window and just yeah moses on down the beach like at that point the president's son just got killed in the presence of the presence of the president like shit would be flying out like you'd have marines landing on the fucking beach and stuff like that like that kind of extremism um but like the yeah the nonchalant just like oh, i'm just gonna go in the water well, this, hey, it was a C this, squad, right? And then the this, guys this wetsuit's gonna keep that <laughs> giant bolt hole in my 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 left side. Uh, it's gonna keep it, you know, patched up. We'll be good to go. But hey, oh, man, dude. it's Jason's eighth movie. We knew what we were getting into when we went when we decided to agree, uh, watch it, and um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Still, now one thing I will say on that scene, just to kind of close that out, is um, the president, uh, quote unquote, having no idea. Mm. Yeah. You know, like she's like, oh, I'm gonna tell the truth, and like she was really. Very, like, oh, like, just separating herself. And I'm wondering, like, for part two, if she's going to end up being the ultimate villain. Because remember, the, the beekeeper is to get the queen, right? Like, when yeah. the queen makes bad offspring, the yep. bee is supposed to get, she's the queen. And I think it was just her um, manipulating the situation because she realized, I'm going to have to sacrifice my kid to keep myself out of this. Because, like you said, you were behind 15 counties. And we fixed it. I'm like, you mean to tell me she didn't know where that money came from or how it happened? Nah. Nah, yeah. it was a little too much. And I think I think if there's a two, I, I'm thinking we're going to kind of explore that a little bit. Yeah, I'd have I to mean, agree Jeremy Iron this. Sorry. Go ahead, Chris. No, I, I have to agree with you, man. The, uh, I, I think she was maybe playing it up. You know, I thought she did a good job. I think she was maybe playing it up a little bit because the head of the bureau was there. And you could see him listening. He's on the phone like, did he just say that? Yeah, they, okay. And he was like, yeah, you didn't hear that. And I, yeah, okay, I didn't yeah, hear the, that. The kid killed him, though, I think, so it took care of that. Yeah, problem. yeah. Yep. But what's interesting is Jeremy Irons is still alive, too. So, you know, her manipulation of him, the president of him over the years, I'm assuming because he probably has a fatuation with her, infatuation. Um, I suspect she'll probably pull on those heartstrings and pull him back in to get whatever revenge she might be after. Might oh, be and also, shout out to Mini Driver. Like, yeah. she looked hot, dude. I'm like, mm. She definitely aged well. I mean, I don't know, you know, what she's been doing, but she looks hotter to me now than she did way back when she was younger. Like, she, I was like, wow, she person. looks really good. Like, shout out to what she's been doing. Yeah, I didn't even notice. I was just... Yeah, she's a great watching the killing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. I remember <laughs> The uh, plausible deniability. I, I mean, I was watching Jason. Man, Jason was... Just, <laughs> he was smoking dudes, man. Yeah, you're smoking dudes. So yeah, if you're if you're in Jason Statham movies, man, this is the movie for you. I will definitely say, um, you know, if you're like transporter mechanic crank, you know, this is right in line with those movies, yes. man. It was it was fun to watch. Um, like I said, suspend reality for some of these movies and just enjoy them for what they are. And uh, I mean, I had a great time watching it. Um, I, I'm looking forward to a to a sequel, you know. So that kind of tells you, for me at least. Uh, where I stand with the movie. Like, when you're looking for, okay, I want more. You know, I want to see where this goes. You know, I don't want it just to be a one and done. I want to see at least a second one. So, for me, it was definitely a good movie. One of, uh, one of the top ones, I think, that we've seen so far. Yeah, most definitely. So, guys, hey, it brings us to that same point in the, the review that uh, I know everybody looks forward to. You know, what do we rank this, right? What do we What do we have as far as numbers? So uh, I'll pass it over to Grant first up, man. Like, what do you got on this? Well, I got an alibi because I'm a terrible introduction person. Uh, key oh, grips, okay. man. I totally let, the, let, it, let it slip. But Alec Frazier, Michael Desario, J.P. Ridgway, and James Sams, you are heroes to us. Thank you for what you do. And uh, my rating for the movie. So um, I, I'll be real. I didn't particularly love the movie the first time I saw it because I actually thought it was going to be something slightly different. Anybody who's a Division fan, the video game, I kind of thought that they were going to go down that way where it was going to be like clandestine sleeper cell folks that wake up and save the, the country kind of thing. Uh, but the second time I, I went through to watch it for, for this review, uh, I actually found myself really enjoying it that much more. Um, once again, loved the setup for the villain. It really made me hate them instantly. Uh, and then I would say that this is probably one of the more brutal J um, Jason Statham movies as far as like the violence and the blood. And I think that, kind of goes to complement the atrocities of the bad guys. Like, you really want to see them get their comeuppance. Um, 
but still Jason Statham movie. Uh, would happily turn it on for background noise or just to, to watch a good ass kicking movie. Uh, but for me, it's a six. Awesome. What about you, Eric? What do you got, man? Uh, yeah, man. Like I said, for this to be uh, a Jason Statham movie, man, it's kind of what I expected, you know, and, I, and I'm always happy when I get what I expect. I mean, so some surprises are good, some are bad. This is exactly is what I was looking for. Um, it does leave a little bit too too much story left behind, which is why I'm kind of looking forward to a sequel. Uh, so with that being said, uh, I, I did give it a seven. Nice. All right, so I guess I'm last up, right? I'm always brutal on these, man. Um, <laughs> so I'll just come right out with a pull that band-aid off, man. I gave it a seven, dude. I, I mean, I dig Jason Statham movies. I think he's awesome uh, in, in all the movies that he does. Um, while I might not make uh, like a particular movie that he's in, I always like his parts. I think he does a great job. I think he's a phenomenal, yeah. phenomenal actor. One of my favorite actors, actually. Um, so, yeah, I think the seven from me was, was well-deserved. And I'm going to have to agree with Grant on. I, I think I was talking with Eric about it earlier. I was like, dude, it reminds me from just the trailer um, without seeing the movie. It reminds me of, like, The Division. And he was like, what's that? Oh, I had to break that down. I'm like, dude, that's like one of the best games ever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was going to be kind of like a division. And that prob that's probably the reason why maybe it didn't get as high a mark. But uh, I think seven's pretty solid for me. And I'll, I'll stand by that all day. Way to go, Jason. Man. So guys, uh, that brings it into a pretty sweet spot, man. Right now, it's coming in fourth on our leaderboard. Between Violent Night and Fast and, uh, Fast and Furious X or Fast 10 or whatever they want to call that movie. Uh, but I think, it, uh, I, I think it's a pretty solid spot. I, I wish it made it a little higher, but hey, man, the numbers don't lie. So thanks to Leroy Jenkins, that's where it is. All right, so, you know, without further ado, guys, this kind of brings us to the end of uh, the review. But again, we appreciate all you guys' comments. We've been seeing a lot of engagement, uh, which is awesome. So... Yeah, if you if you guys got some ratings on this one, if you want to throw your numbers in there, feel free. Um, and, yeah, continue to hit us up in the comment sections. We appreciate all the love everybody's showing. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it seems like we're doing something people like, so we'll keep doing it. Uh, yeah. So easy day. But hey, from Chris, man, I'm signing off. Beards of War out. Take Nick Fury out. Beards of War. Pat Brogan Rambo. See you next time. <laughs>